This is an intro video to how to make a rotor hazard race timing system. Uh, we'll go over the optional and the required components that we will use to build uh, the timing system. And a lot of these will revolve around the two uh, components that we sell, the rotor hazard race timing um, PCB, which just has uh, resistors installed. And then the other is our PowerSense backpack, uh, which this module is pretty universal in the sense that you don't have to use it for the timing system, but uh, it's geared uh, in such a way that not only does it have redundant power, so if one drops out, it'll still power the board with the other uh, power supply going into it, but it, it senses uh, the voltage, amperage, and power from two INA, um, 219B uh, ICs on here. Um, it also has a real-time clock, a DS3231 uh, real-time clock. Um, we also provide the housing component for uh, the battery for the real-time clock. Um, we're not selling it with the battery for uh, travel restrictions through shipping. Uh, but it is your typical CR1220 cell um, that you could probably find at a grocery store along with two 5 volt 5 amp um, switching regulators. One is primarily for the entire system and the other one is isolated for uh, LEDs uh, because this board actually uses, uh, can switch between GPIO 10 and GPIO 18 using the, uh, the bridge solder uh, points over here. Um, the timing system actually outputs a signal for your typical uh, WS2821 um, LEDs and then the power from the 5 volt 5 amp will power that strip um, separately so in case you happen to have a large load or, or too many LEDs or a short um, it'll actually not uh, damage your timing system because that, that whole 5 volt 5 amp is separate from the rest. Um, it also has a dedicated slot for BME 280. Um, that is your temperature and humidity sensor. We sell that also. Uh, this is not our board, but um, we've purchased a lot to be um, sort of an add-on board to the power sense. Um, it's elevated. Uh, the reason why we didn't bring it and add it into this board is we want a better, more accurate temperature reading. Um, of the ambient temperature around it, and it's over the uh, the actual power uh, regulator for the full entire system. Um, so these three boards we sell. Um, the other required boards that you would need to build the system are the Raspberry Pi, the Arduino Pro Mini, and the RX5808. Um, this board is set up for eight nodes, and a node is a pair of Arduino Pro Minis and RX5808. Um, so you can have one, you can have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, the board is set up so that all you have to do is solder certain pads and the uh, rotor hazard software will actually determine how many nodes are currently in your system. Um, on the subject of Raspberry Pi, the uh, Raspberry Pi of choice is the 3 Model A Plus, and the reason why we picked it is for form factor. Um, we don't need a lot of the, you know, Ethernet port or the the uh, multitude of USBs along with any of the other components on board. Uh, we do want the CPU that the B Plus has, um, but for the purpose of of this timing system, in order to get it the smallest. Um, we wanted to use a USB to Ethernet adapter, which this is optional because some people may opt out and choose to uh, communicate with their system via uh, Wi-Fi. You can turn this into an AP and log in directly into it. There's also a, uh, a modification uh, that you can do to have an external antenna because it has an internal one, but if you put it inside of a metal case, you can't really get the signal. So a lot of people end up creating a, an external antenna here. but for the most robust signal um, that's reliable during a race, sometimes you want to have a hard line. 
So um, for the purpose of making it even smaller, uh, we would want to cut off um, this plug here and solder the points directly to the back, or if, if you're brave enough, uh, remove this component completely, um, which is what we'll be doing later on in the video series. Um, but the PowerSense board doesn't care which Arduino that you have. Um, for the timing system, we care that it's this particular board until they can come out with a zero version with this processor. Um, but as you can see here, it's your typical regular GPIO pin set. Um, so you can use an A+, plus. you could use a zero if you wanted to, or you can use a B+, plus. and it, it always fits into place. Um, we have the cutouts necessary to fit every single one of these boards, but it's not necessary that, that you, you know, for your project, because this is a universal board, um, you could use whichever one. But for the rotor hazard timing system, uh, we're kind of requiring you to use the A plus model. Um, and connecting it can either be through solder, which that's our preferred method, by connecting them like this and then soldering them directly on, which this board actually has uh, it, on the silk screen uh, the, the pins that you would actually need to solder because you don't have to solder all of them. You just have to solder certain ones on them. Um, but in order to get it the smallest, instead of putting the female uh, pin headers over here, uh, we suggest to just slide it over the top and then solder them in place. Uh, we'll go over that in a later video. Um, some of the other components that will make your life easier, but they're you know, definitely optional, are these round pen, pin headers, um, as opposed to the ones that you would typically find in uh, kits. Uh, those are square pins. The round pins are a lot lower profile. Um, they allow for much, much lower um, components. And for the RX5808s, we will use these in an unconventional way to make them even smaller. Um, and the reason why is because a lot of these modules are not through holes. They're castellated, meaning they're like the half moons. Um, so we will be using that to our advantage to make this system even smaller. Now, in order to program all of your Arduinos, you need an FTDI adapter. Uh, this translates USB um, to UART, and it also powers the Arduinos. And we'll show you why uh, we would want to have something like this um, to, to uh, program the Arduinos prior to putting it in. Because unlike like a micro or any of the other ones, uh, there is no USB on the Pro Minis. But we use this to our advantage because it makes the whole timing system even smaller. Um, for the, or the Raspberry Pi, you need a SD card reader um, and also an SD card. Uh, for the purposes of this one, uh, we're using a class 1U uh, SD card. It's the Samsung Evo uh, 32 gigabyte. Usually they're on sale a lot. Um, they're kind of a go-to and they're, they're pretty reliable. Um, but it doesn't matter which one you use as long as it's a class 10 or a class U1 um, for the highest speed. Um, another optional component, but we strongly suggest it, is a five volt, five, um, sorry, five volt, uh, 20 by 20, uh, fan. And these, we, we actually have, um, solder pin points, uh, fan one and fan two for continuous five volt power. They're not speed regulated. They're not temperature regulated. Um, they are just on. So as soon as you plug in your power into the board, it powers on the fans. Um, because the assumption here is you're going to want to have this system cool from the get-go. Um, and by just providing the power here, um, it'll turn on the fans and ensure that you don't have to worry about turning it on via software or via switch. Um, also, not necessary, but super handy, screwdriver, um, a pair of tweezers. Um, the tweezers are probably not going to be needed as much, so those are all optional. Uh, recommended will be a, um, a soldering iron. Uh, preference for us is a Weller WES51, but of course there's a huge debate online as to which one to use. We just recommend that you use a nice temperature regulated um, and also adjustable 
soldering iron so that you can dial in the correct um, temperature for the soldering that you choose or the solder that you choose and and for this one um, you can use whatever solder you want leaded unleaded but the differences are leaded lower temperature unleaded requires a much higher temperature and a lot more patience uh, to put it in but in any case we also uh, recommend um, rosin core uh, solder and that way it, it makes a nice clean joint because it has flux inside of it uh, it cleans the surfaces as it um, solders it in place because oxidation will cause you to to create bad joints and we don't want to have that happen um, also to connect the boards together because uh, there are a set of seven pins over here and a set of seven pins over here because when you put the two boards together they'll actually be on top of each other uh, we suggest using 22 or 20 gauge, even 18 gauge uh, silicone wire. Um, and the main reason here is the silicone always does a lot better than the PVC sleeving. Um, it's a lot more uh, resistant um, to the same motion over and over again. It won't, uh, it won't fatigue over time uh, or dry out as, as bad um, because when you have your boards together like this and you need to work on them, um, having hard pins here makes you have to desolder these pins every single time. So we suggest using the silicon wire so that every time that you need to work on it, which is going to be pretty, pretty rare, um, a lot of our need to have access are on the places that need to be. Everything on the inside isn't really a, a need to, to actually access uh, for maintenance or anything like that. But if you do, when you solder those with the wires, you can use this as a hinge and open it up uh, like so. Uh, along with that, we suggest, but this is optional, uh, a nice voltmeter. Um, the reason why we're suggesting a voltmeter is when you get your board, because uh, sometimes shipping can uh, move things around, um, these are very robust um, boards and they they are packed um, very well, uh, but there is the off chance that, you know, during shipping, a box could get crushed. Um, we just recommend that before you start this entire project, you plug in um, into the power supplies uh, between, you know, it's, it says on here, 10 to 16.6 volts, um, and then checking the five volt regulators. Um, there are two points here, the 5 volt and the ground. Uh, there's also 5 volt and ground for all of your I2C points. Your 5 volt and ground over here for your fans. All of those are connected, but we would suggest choosing one of those to test along with uh, these two on the back um, for the, the LED. And we just want to make sure that at least your, your switching regulators are functioning properly. Uh, later on when we do the software, it'll also check um, to make sure that your actual I2C components are, are good. But to start off, we want you to, to be able to check this first. Um, along with that, tape. Uh, not super, super sticky tape. We're using Blue Painter's tape. And the reason why to use tape in this project is when you have the Arduinos and the pins in the right place, the problem is you can only solder one side of it. But as soon as you flip it, it just they all fall out so we recommend tape in this circumstance to just temporarily tape these to the back as you flip it over so then you can solder the back here because there are going to be a lot of solder points that you need to, to solder um, we just recommend that you at least have something to hold them in place because uh, during testing we we noticed that they fell out a lot and then the last piece um well certainly not the last piece because the the other piece over here is flush cutters. Um, these will be very handy for, for cutting pins and then cutting your wires. Um, and also, uh, if you're brave enough, cutting the USB connector off of the, uh, the Raspberry Pi, if you can't desolder this, because uh, they do use lead-free solder, um, the last component is the case. Now, this is optional because a lot of people tend to like to create their own, uh, 3D print them, because these models uh, of the two boards will be available um, on our, our Thingiverse page along with our web our website. Um, so you can create your own board, but we did find an actual metal case um, that not only 
helps with uh, grounding or, or shielding the entire timing system because you only want the uh, the signal to enter one direction. You don't want it to come in from the sides because sometimes you'll get false positive reads. Um, but this aluminum case not only shields, but it's thick enough that you would actually need to hit this pretty hard in order to dent it. I mean, I'm, I'm pushing on this pretty hard and you can see it flexing just a bit. If you can only imagine an impact, um, this, sh this should only like scratch it or maybe slightly on the surface dented. Um, this case is relatively inexpensive, easy to find, and with 3D component, 3D printed components that we've uh, actually uploaded into our Thingiverse page, um, they will actually attach onto the boards, um, all of them, when it's fully assembled, and you can see the slots on the side, it'll slide into place like a server rack. Um, so that's not only good for maintenance, um, it's also good for you in the field whenever you need to switch components, but this also acts as a great grounding and it's also good for thermal too. Um, the benefit is it's, it's just sort of the best of all worlds. So with that, um, the next couple of videos will go over how to prep the boards, how to assemble the boards, and uh, finally on how to program all the boards. Um, the next video, because we want to be able to prep everything, will include software. So and once you get your FTDI adapter, you want to immediately uh, start to program your Arduinos. And we'll, we'll tell you why in the next video. But with that, um, good luck.